Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. Welcome to Guardian Radio AM. Today is Thursday. Thursday. The 13th. You know, I have to go blank, right? Because when you work overnight, I don't know which day it is, but apparently Aaron Green is saying that today is Thursday the 13th. And it's a little after 11 o'clock in the morning. Once again, this is C.A. Nuri, and I shall be your host for the day as we have a discussion about what is in the news. Right? Every so often, Aaron and I come together and we hash things out, we trash things out about things that stood out that ordinary people just ignored. So one or two things that stood out, and I say, Aaron, did you see this? I WhatsApp us in Aaron. I say, yes, I see that. I say, Aaron, write that down. Write that one down because we have to hash that out for the benefit of the Bahamian people. Right? There are only few of us who actually analyze the news, who question and say, what exactly does this mean? What was they trying to say? What is the conclusion of that? And today, we're going to be doing the same thing, right? We have about three topics, actually it's six, but we have some three topics that I want to hash out. I want to hash out with Erin um, to see if she sees it how I see it or whether the Bahamian public took time to say, what? You read that? But that's the first thing I want to read, right? Um, recently. And I, I spoke for, about it before, especially on social media. Recently, the press secretary, the press secretary of the Bahamas, uh, Mr. Clint Watson, was afforded the opportunity to become general manager of ZNS, Zephyr News Station. Few people know that's what ZNS stands for, right? And we wish him well. And but we on uh, uh, Guardian Radio AM, we analyze that and say, what exactly does that mean? And we even question whether this was appropriate for his his promotion. I guess we could use the word promotion if you want to use that, right? What does it mean for freedom of the press and media? But of course, we had some pushback and people said, man, let the man live. And I said, not man live, you know. It's just in terms of protocol and what it means for the betterment of the Bahamas. And that's all Aaron and I want. We want to be um, um, patriots. I like that word. Those who fight for better Bahamas even at our detriment. Um, but recently, something came across the news. And I said, man, be ready to finish with Mr. Watson. Ready to say our point. And something new came in the media. And I said, okay, Aaron, we got to bring it up again. And I, of course, I'm going to let Aaron again read that line and say who, who actually mentioned again Mr. Watson. And that's just off what our first topic. But I wanted to hash that out before we go to the next topic. And Aaron, when you're ready, you can start with that. Okay. All right, so we're going to read from an article in uh, the Nassau Tribune from the 7th of July, right? Uh, Public Media Alliance raises concerns about Clint Watson's appointment at Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. Stop right there. Yeah. Who is this Public Media Alliance, people, before we go on? Right, so a global nonprofit organization, Public, Alli Public Media Alliance is a global nonprofit organization, Um that, that's what I so got from the article. I'm not sure why foreigners want to come inside our bohemian business, but it's interesting that a foreign media group, mm -hmm. wherever, they wherever they are, took notice of what is happening in the media in the Bahamas. Right. The article says, the organization described itself as the, quote, largest global association of public service media organizations, close quote. The BCB, Bahamas, uh, Bahamas Broadcasting Corporation, 
Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas, is listed as a, quote, core member, close quote, online. But an employee at the broadcasting company said they have not heard of ZNS having any conflict with the organization. So it is a global non-profit organization that provides a degree of oversight for public service media organizations. And continue reading from the article. Uh, a global nonprofit organization has raised concerns about former Office of the Prime Minister's Press Secretary Clint Watson's appointment as the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas' general manager. Public Media Alliance said on its website that it had concerns, particularly regarding the, quote, transparency and independence of the appointment process, close quotes. I wonder if I should have you go on there or just to analyze that a little bit. What issue do they have again? Regarding the transparency and independence of the appointment process. We brought that up. We brought that up when we was analyzing it yep. and, and, and querying whether it's appropriate or not. And this is these are our concerns. So imagine there's an international foreign group who has some kind of degree of oversight having the same type of concerns. Whereas I think we have sovereignty over our own affairs and whatever happens, happens. But if international bodies are looking and they say, hey, why you all behemoths ain't complaining? Why you all ain't see the, 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 the issue? Mm -hmm. I am concerned about us in the Bahamas in, in terms of how we, our, how we introspect, look upon what is happening in our country. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and how we treat people who are providing critical engagement about public issues. We like to throw out that word complain, right? But there are organizations across the globe who present themselves so that ordinary citizens have a space to lodge their complaints with, right? Um, we'll continue reading from the statement by Public Media Alliance on their website. Quote, effective public service media organizations are built on a foundation of trust, whereby there are protections from political interference in place, particularly in terms of their organization, organizational and editorial independence. For any public broadcaster to fulfill its mandate of providing reliable, independent, and trusted news, capable of holding power to account, and reporting without fear or favor requires a high degree of separation from the government. This means that there should be strong controls on the ability of the government to intervene in and influence the affairs of public service media. The public needs to know that their public media is operating in and for the public interest and is not beholden to the government. Within a small domestic media market, it is even more essential that audiences can access independent and trustworthy information free from government oversight. It is therefore essential that clarity is provided from the government and Mr. Watson about the nature of Mr. Watson's involvement in the editorial affairs of ZNS while he was still working for the OPM. That's interesting. And so I think it speaks specifically to that period of time. Just before. The just before the official appointment was made. When he, when he said he's some sort of a consultant. Right. The, op the office of the prime minister confirmed the news on June 13th. Right. The statement said, earlier this year, Mr. Watson in his role as press secretary attracted criticism for his involvement in affairs relating to ZNS. Mm. Mr. Watson declined to comment on the organization's concerns. Reports had circulated online earlier this year that claimed he was working at ZNS as a consultant, mm. in addition to maintaining his role as press secretary. But in January, Mr. Watson denied being appointed as a consultant, mm. insisting that he was only helping the state-owned broadcaster upgrade its news department. To help him. The Tribune reported in May that Mr. Watson was expected to step down as press secretary to become the new general manager of ZNS. That news was eventually confirmed on June 13th. 
The Tribune says that they reported that in May. Now, Miles LaRota, state minister with responsibility to the Broadcasting Corporation, had previously addressed questions surrounding impartiality, impartiality of the imp- appointment. He said, quote, You know the public will make up its mind when they see the product of ZNS. Clint Watson has worked at various agencies, and I don't think we're going to disqualify individuals because they work at the office of the prime minister. Considering there are other members of the press, should they not be considered for other jobs that come up just because they worked at OPM? They're working for the Bahamian people, close quotes. I like the part where it said working for the Bahamian people, right? Which is different from working for government. Because, I mean, it's clearly different right? from working for government. I remember in a, on his farewell uh, address, mm-hmm. the press secretary, former press secretary, he said that, remember Zedness is a, a, a is a and in short and I'm trying to get I was trying to quote him but it belongs to the government and that because it belongs to the government they will there will be some type of bias because they promote government agenda who and said that that's what the press former press secretary suggested and you said, mean Clint Watson the, former yeah, press, yeah, yeah, the one you'll yeah. be talking about yeah, we're talking about and and, and so there'll be some sort of bias right because they because it's owned state owned that they would be reporting and promoting. That's a key word there. I just want to Promoting know how, the government's agenda. How do we have so many people in government that don't... Op, uh, technically, let me rephrase that. How do we have so many people fulfilling functions in the government spaces that don't understand what government is and how it functions? And this is where we scrutinize it, because I, I didn't want to misquote him, but I, that's, yeah, yeah, what yeah, I, yeah, yeah. that's where I got out of it, right? Uh, but I, I, I was just found it entertaining that an international body raised the same concerns. And I remember when we raised concerns about it, uh, people called in and said, we are too critical. We like complain too much. Mm-hmm. And the idea that um, international bodies have the same concerns, right? Mm-hmm. And especially in a environment, a small environment, like the article said, where people suggested that the government was removing, gutting media personalities uh, and, and securing them for the promotion of government. Mm -hmm. And in that scope, in that vacuum, um, um, but mind you, let me move from there. Uh, Mr. Watson is competent. Let me make this point. Mr. Watson is competent. His his role is going to be general manager, which is different from news producer and and, and editorials. I want to just say that, that that he is not going to be, or he should not be intimately involved in the operation operation news. But we shall wait and see if Mm -hmm. such... Now listen, Such a, it, it I got a text here. Let's get right to this, if you don't mind. It yeah. says, who is this international body that's against Clint's appointment? Did you guys do research before you start thinking they are credible? Start acting professional. I want to respond to that, right? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, the truth is, I didn't go and find who, who exactly are these people and, and where's the office located, you know, um, not, not like the work I did the, the Texas thing trying it, to figure out fake who, news or agency. Right, like trying to figure out who Celebrating Women International was. I didn't do all of that research, right? But the point that's being made in the statement is sound. These are points that were raised not just by Mr. Nuri and I, but raised by other Bahamians. Mm-hmm. These are reasonable questions put on the table. And so I wonder... Why is it that we need to know who the organization is? I mean, we, we, we need to know who the organization is, right? But why are you trying to discredit what they're saying when what they're saying has been raised by others? It's not extreme. It's reasonable and it's sound. It is what it is, Aaron. There will, there will always be those who support and those who are against. I just found it interesting to say, hey, I got to... Hash that out, and that's yeah. what we're here for. But yeah, I want—I want to transition. Yeah, absolutely. I want to transition, right? Mm-hmm. Recently, inside the news, mm-hmm. recently inside the news, an eighty-year-old woman, yeah, was sexually assaulted, mm-hmm. and of course, that is is something that should spark alarm and outrage. Mm-hmm. Um, my concern is: is this becoming a trend? Because in recent months, in as many days, this is by the second or third 80-year-old who has been sexually assaulted. And you might, uh, I, I know they say rape is, is up. I, I, and hopefully you have the article with, with, mm-hmm. about that, right? But in my life, I'm lowish now, a mid-age, I, I should say, mm-hmm. 
I never heard of 80-year-olds being targeted for sexual assault. You see how I use the word sexual assault now and not rape? Anyway, I've never heard of 80-year-olds being sexually assaulted. But now every, and within, within the year, mm-hmm. I, I'm almost sure, certain, I've heard of th- at least three 80-year-old women being sexually targeted. I am concerned whether this is a trend, whether there should be a warning posted for 80-year-old plus 70-year-old women to say, hey, there's a concern. There's an increase of sexual assault for your age bracket that there are young men targeting matured elderly, because this is not different from matured, and elderly women. Mm-hmm. I wonder if, should people, grandmothers, be in a panic? Well, I think we... we I think we've reached crisis levels. I mean, I think I mean, we, we have been at crisis level, and I think it continues to escalate. Let me beat you, Erin. Yeah. You remember when the commissioner of police said this was an isolated incident? I think so, yeah. And now there's another isolated incident? incident yeah. On top of another, another isolated incident. There's too many isolated incidents. After yeah. you have two isolated incidents, you know, I, there's you no know, isolated no more. So listen, in fact, I got a series of Articles here from the local papers uh, detailing sexual assaults, sexual violence, uh, and, and including towards elderly members of society. But let's start with these two stories, right? In, the, in June 14th, Guardian article, crime down 30%, but rapes are up. Starts, while overall crime was down 30% in the first five months of 2023 compared, compared to the same period last year, the Minister of National Security, Mr. Monroe, said yesterday r- rape reports were up. Quote, unfortunately, the one offense that has increased is rape. Uh, we know rape is up by 64%. But when we, we rewind, let's go to April the 25th in the Nassau Tribune article, Serious crime, 28% down, but rape cases increase. Serious crime has declined by more than a quarter this year, according to the Commission of Police, although there's been an increase in the number of rapes. Uh, During a press conference, he said crime is down by 28%, but rape increased by 10%. You notice that right there? In April, the Commission of Police said that rape had increased by 10% in the same period. By June of this year... The Minister of National Security said that rape had increased by 64% in the same period, right? So we have had a drastic spike Mm. in a matter of months. I mean, in a matter of one month, from a 10% increase from the period, right, up to April 2022, to a 64% increase from the period up to June 2022. 64% 20. 64% of the spike, Aaron. Right? That's a big jump, Aaron. So let's get to the articles, right? The first one, woman, 82 sexually assaulted police say. That's the 12th of July. That was yesterday. Police arrested a 50-year-old man believed to be responsible for burglarizing a Centerville home and sexually assaulting an 82-year-old woman around 1.30 a.m. yesterday. Another article. This one is from June the 20th. This is the, the other elderly woman. Teen 19 arrested for rape of woman. This is from Bahamas Court News on the 20th of June. The police have arrested a 19-year-old man in connection with the rape of an 83-year-old woman in her home. It is alleged that the woman was, in, was at her home in New Providence when the suspect beat and sexually assaulted her at around 2.30 a.m. God of mercy. I got another story from the 12th of July. Principal sentenced to seven months in prison for indecent assault of student. A principal who was also a pastor was yesterday sentenced to seven months imprisonment and given a $1,000 fine. Now, mind you, this happened a little while ago, Mm -hmm. but this one is just being dealt with. Concluded. Concluded today. Let's go to another story. Father accused of sexually abusing his teenage daughter. This is the 12th of July. He's just being brought before the court. A uh, father accused of sexually abusing his teenage daughter was yesterday remanded to prison. Prosecutors say the 39-year-old man's name has been withheld to protect the complainant's identity. First offense, August 2021, accused of having sexual relations 
with the girl who is now 17, June 27th, 2023. Another story, Father, uh, the same story, my bad. 18-year-old uh, charged with unlawful sexual intercourse. This is July 7th. An 18-year-old man accused of sexually assaulting a 13-year-old girl in, girl in April is behind bars after being remanded in custody. Another story, man tried to rape girl on her way to school. This is the 4th of July in the Nassau Tribune. A man is behind bars accused of attempting to sexually assault a teenage girl on Soldier Road as she was on her way to school in February. I'm not going to read the names, but I give you the article so you could go and read them yourself. Another article, the 4th of July, man on bail for, accuse, for murder accused of going on rape spree. Say rape spree. Another article, teen ex raped after accepting ride. This is from the Bahamas Court News, the 13th of June, 23. A 17-year-old girl was raped on Monday after accepting a ride from a stranger. The victim was walking along Robinson Road at about 3 p.m. when a man driving a small light blue car stopped and offered her a ride. Another article from the 14th of April, 23, Bahamas Court News. Man charged with sexual assault of girl 12 on Park. A 36-year-old with two pending sec child sex crime cases was on Thursday accused of sexually assaulting a 12-year-old girl while she played on the park. Now, remember when it said two pending child sex crime cases? Mm -hmm. Man accused of molesting two girls. We're going to go all the way back to the 21st of September, 2021. A 33-year-old man accused of sexually molesting two young girls in possess and possession of child pornography was yesterday remanded to prison. That's the same man. The same man? This is the same man in the man charged with sexual assault of girl 12 on Park from Bahamas Court News Story, 14th of April, 2020. Three. That's what I found in 30 minutes. And not just found, I did all the work of copying and pasting in just 30 minutes. Um, this is serious times. Like I said, um, recently the Minister of National Security mentioned something about um, the persons who perpetrate these crimes. And, mm -hmm. and I should have found that article to use the right quote. Uh, but I interpreted saying that it's a cultural problem or a household problem and that we need to start um, conditioning our boys to that no means no. And I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember even reading that how women should learn to protect themselves. But with the increase of rape incidents, 60%, mm -hmm. there needs to be a response. Mm -hmm. Right, there needs to be a response by women's group, there needs to be a response by men's, groups. men's group, also, uh, as in terms of how do we move forward, move forward, educate men on how to act to, toward women, and educate um, women mm -hmm. how to guard themselves uh, against mm -hmm. these men. And uh, surely, rape is a, uh, it's a crime of, of just gotta take it, power. Power and violence. And violence. Yeah. Right? And if there is a cultural issue that we need to deal with, we need to deal with it swiftly. But I see that the incident with the MP. Yep. On the front of today's Tribune. And apparently the DPP, the Director of Public Prosecution, has... Made a recommendation. Made a recommendation well, to the commission of, of police wait, on what to happen. Let, let's rephrase that. Uh, let's state it. Made recommendations. Made a recommendation. Well, what no, 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 no. Pause. Because made a recommendation suggested that they, 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 that there's one way to go and they told them where to go. They made recommendations to the COP, right? That's what I said. things on the table. I said differently. Yeah, you didn't add the S. It was, it was recommendations. It's a different, op, op, different. Okay. Made a recommendation on what should happen. Let me read it. Acting front of the Tribune, police, quote, stand by, close quotes, on MP rape case. Acting Director of Public Prosecutions, Cordell Frazier, has officially submitted her recommendations to Police Commissioner Clayton Fernanda concerning an MP accused of raping and abusing his girlfriend. I willing to bet you, man, I didn't read the article. I just didn't know. Did he mention the MP name? Just asking. They might have. They did. Did they? 
or, or the names to hold on, hold on. So blot it out. Just asking. No, I don't. No know mention his like, name. So it's a secret man. I don't, no one knows who this MP is. It's just, just, just a secret again. Now remember the last thing the commissioner said. Well, everybody knows his name. Why yeah, I have to say it? Yeah, yeah. Here's another interesting quote from the commissioner. He says, just stand by. There's still one or two inquiries. Inquiries, he said yesterday. Wait, wait, wait. The director of public prosecution given recommendation, but the commission said, no, 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 no. Yeah, hold on. Despite the recommendation, we have some inquiries. We still do it. I, I, don't worry about what the prosecutor say. <laughs> don't, mind, and don't mind him. Don't mind what I say. Let me read straight from the article. Mr. Oh, Lord. On Tuesday, uh, she referred to... She referred the Tribune to Commissioner Fernando for information about what comes next. And when you say she, who do you mean? The Director of Acting Public Prosecutions. Acting Director of Public Prosecutions, Cordell Frazier, mm -hmm. has, submitted, has officially submitted her recommendations to Commissioner of Police. Official submissions. Go ahead. Right. On Tuesday, she referred the Tribune to the Commissioner for information about what comes next. Go ahead to the Commissioner. Although Commissioner Fernanda confirmed he received the acting DPP's recommendations, he declined to give more details. No comment for you all. Quote, just stand by. There's still one or two inquiries, mm -hmm. he said yesterday. Yes, some recommendations were made, but just stand by, please. I Remember I said we, we analyzed things? Yeah. The director, direct, the director... Directed? No. The deputy director yeah. of public prosecution, yeah, yeah. or acting director of public prosecution, recommends based on the information the police give them. Yeah. These are the evidence we came about. These are all the interviews we came about, and we want you to conclude whether there is enough evidence to go forward in terms of a prosecution. See, mm -hmm. this, see, the police already finished the investigation yeah. and give it to the public prosecutor. Mm -hmm. And the public prosecutor then gives a recommendation to the commission of police. Right. And then the commission of police come back and say, despite we already concluded and given it to you, we he, still... He didn't say despite we already concluded. What, he, what did he say then? You tell me what he said, man. What he said? Because remember, they already concluded and give it to the, pro, the, direct, the pro, prosecutor. See, you're making a presumption that when information is given to the, the public prosecutor... The police. ...that it's because the case has been concluded. They may have given information to the public prosecutor for advice. They may have made a submission. Imagine, and they they made a submission, and the public prosecutor says, "I uh, I think that this is an ex I'm unclear on the information that you have provided here in this segment of your report. I would wish to get clarity. I would wish to hear from A, B, or C. Right. So, it it, it it I don't think we should presume that because the information went to the, like to the prosecution that, that it was concluded. All right, I like what you said. Okay. Yeah. Um, but let me finish reading the quote because it gets better. It gets better than that? Yeah, man. Press for more information, he said, quote, I can't say nothing with respect to that. Just stand by. She did what she was supposed to have done, close quotes. Mm. See, I like that. I love that. Mm. Do you know what he just said? What he just said? He just said, I can't say nothing. Nothing. And I agree with you, sir. You can't say nothing. You can't leave us with nothing. You can't just... Walk through this and say nothing. You're good already. You have to say something. He says, stand by. That's like saying, back up, back up. But he says, stand by. And we as citizens, we got to stand by until he but comes I mean, back. there's nothing, that we, nothing else that we can do. Yeah, stand by. But stand by. But we need to transition again. Yeah, man. You have anything else to say on this before we transition? Recently. I do. You do? Yeah, just very... I don't want you to jeopardize this case. We got to stick to... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, 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 we're, not, we're, not, we're not talking yeah. about the case. Yeah. I just want to... I don't want to admonish. I want to encourage our state officials to speak intentionally, to be very careful what they say, to ensure that they are not perpetuating the very thing that they are supposed to be helping us to solve or resolve or We have a competent police force. That's not going to happen. I, whatever decided, I, I believe it's based on the evidence. I, and wherever it goes, I support the commission of police. And I support no, the, no, we're not talking about the case. Yeah. I'm not talking about the case with the man who wants to be PM. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about something wider than that. 
I'm talking about what we see, what we've seen, a drastic escalation in sexual violence. We've seen rape culture unfolding in front of us. But at the same time, we see leaders making reckless statements mm. about interpersonal relationships, intimate partner violence, about sexual violence. And then we still have a minister of national security who has not appropriately addressed or retracted his statement that a seven-year-old can consent to sex in the face of a shifting legislative regime where the word rape is slowly disappearing from the legal language and being replaced with language with I, unlawful I sexual intercourse. I don't like the word rape. It sounds harsh. I, I like this un unlawful sexual encounter. It's, it's, less, it's less harsh. So are the penalties for the act, and I think that in there is, is where the problem lies. You and your women activist thing. You're just trying to demean men. But I want to transition. Yeah, man. I want to transition because we spoke about this yesterday, but I wanted to analyze it some more, right, whilst mm -hmm. we have the chance. Um, during the honor ceremony by the governor general, right, mm -hmm. uh, as we celebrated our 50th independence uh, from colonizers, mm -hmm. right, as we celebrate we self, ourselves right um we decided to recognize some international persons during this time right i personally raise a concern and saying that a hey, um i call of recognizing some international people you know because we have some friends. Well, I, I will call them allies, but Bahamians, we, we like to use the word friends. We have some international people who are friends to the Bahamas, who have donated, who have helped propel the Bahamas forward. Apparently, we had two of those persons who were honored recently. We had one by the name of... Maxine Waters. Maxine Waters. And uh, she's a congresswoman in, in the United States. And of, of course, she's been working as support of of the Bahamas, I guess. And then, of course, we have President of Rwanda, with a German name in there, Paul. His Excellency uh, Paul Kagame. And even though I'm not sure what exactly he did, but he's done some work for the for CARICOM, I guess, and the Bahamas by extension, whatever it Hold is. On. Can you point me to a link where Kagame has done work for CARICOM? And in, and, and what feel, what is the... The, the, the premise of the You're work? You're trying to question my prime minister. I, I, I tell you, I don't like it when you do That's it. That's what the prime minister I don't said. like when you do that. Don't question the prime minister. No, because you know who else wants to work with CARICOM? Who? The U.S. government wants to work with CARICOM and the U.S. Uh, Car a Caribbean migrant agreement. And so I'm very concerned when you tell me or, or suggest that one of the reasons why Kagame was honored was because of his work with CARICOM. See, all you and all these, these, these suspected. Uh, no, no, it's nothing suspected. But this is my point yeah, yeah, is, yes, right? Yes. I have no problem, and I see the Prime Minister went in detail. Davis defends honoring, uh, and one knee in particular, K Kagami, right? So because people would say, hey, but we don't even know who, who he is in general. Um, my thing is, does the Prime Minister have a duty of care of explaining beforehand now, after, after public um, scrutiny and people questioning him, does the prime minister have a duty of care of explaining why you are honoring foreigners? And I want to ask this. In terms of the names of the honorees, uh -huh. is it done by the prime minister and the government? Is this a political, I was, is this a political thing? You put the or card. this is a, a political thing you, where there should be a committee? Oh, no, you put the card before the horse. Go ahead. Because man. these are not the prime minister's honors. What do you mean this is not the prime minister's honors? It's not the prime minister. You think Father Sebastian Campbell, you think Father Sebastian Campbell lobby all his life for a national honor system to be the prime minister's honor system? Because ain't not a soul in here could tell me the Award, the honors belong to anybody but Father Sebastian Campbell. So who, who, who give these names? Who advocate for decades. Who give these names then? Surely there's a committee. And the committee... And the committee decided to honor Maxine Waters? I don't know what the and committee... And Kagabi? I don't know what the committee decided to do because I doubt we'll ever see the minutes 
emanating from those committee meetings. I believe the prime minister say let's throw in these two names. That's just me. You just on a whim. Uh, well, remember there's an article. I saw the article on social media by Miss Nico Bethel. You have that article still? Because I sent it to you. You want to read part of that into the into it is, the it's record. A, it's also a lovely article here. Could we can read straight from the Prime Minister. You know, I don't like to make... No, but Nico Bethel made, made a point. And I wonder, because most people don't go to social media like how I used to be on social media. Yeah, uh, no, I, no, no, I, no. Like, Clifford, you you're still looking for it? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 we can get there in a second. You don't want to read from you don't read from the prime minister's statement. Hey, that was me. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, so my, my point is, and tell me when you find it, right? Yeah, yeah. My point is, I am I have no problem with anyone being recognized internationally, foreigners, whatever it is. But Independence Day is sacred. Independence Day is about celebrating Bahamians, the accomplishment of what we have done. As a nation, and those um, those um, nation builders, I believe that the entire ceremony has been diluted. And, and let me maybe make this point: no Bahamian who was honored yeah. that day, no Bahamian who was awarded a national honor was recognized during the ceremony. They didn't right? call the names. They didn't call their names. They just just printed out the names. But they got two foreigners to make a speech. To us. On our golden on jubilee. On our golden jubilee about us. No. Um, but, and yet you will no, call none of those senior people. About their experiences of us. And see, this is where I say it's not apolitical anymore. Because it's, oh, it's an, an agenda. But listen. It's, it's an agenda. And the agenda is not about us. It's, it's and gone, that's why I have an issue with it. It's gone beyond apolitical. Because when you read. Oh, you the, find the article? Yeah, yeah, the article's right here. No, you you, you want me to read for it? Yeah, read it for me. No, I don't, I don't read better. Well, you sound like you read better. No, no. I, you sound like you I sound like I've been trying to get a job at ZNS reading community announcements and for they all never of my hired life. You. Not, but I got time because you have to be senior to get them jobs. Yeah. I like it. I like but really? It. All right. From Philip A. Burroughs. So the, the statement is actually from Philip A. Burroughs. Oh, okay. I told right. Burroughs. One yeah. of the directors of the cultural segment of the 50th anniversary production on July 9th. Mr. Burroughs goes on, I begin the statement by saying that people have to stop blaming the Bahamas Christian Council for the time that they used in their segment of the show. They were given 90 minutes and they took almost exactly that amount of time, if not a minute or so less. Stick a pin right there, mm. if I can, for mm -hmm. a second. Why was the Christian Council given a whole hour and a half? It's an ecumenical uh, service. Okay. You, when you say ecumenical, is that the same thing as part. interfaith? No. So they got a whole hour and a half, and in that hour and a half, they did. There was no space for any other religious no. body in the Bahamas, Bahamian citizens we of other faiths. We are a faith, Christian an hour society. And, a half and nobody. That means the Muslims cannot participate in this. That means the Rastafarians cannot participate in this, and that's why only the Christian people go on. This is no interfaith thing. Be Christian. No, no. We are not Christian. We're not Christian. It's been repeated over and over again over the last two so weeks. So why the Christian pe only the Christian people come? That is the question. Why? Because we are Christian because people. Because they were the only ones who we don't space have space was made for. We have no space for the other Christian, the, the other subsect religious groups. We only have space for Christian. I'm people. I'm so glad this your hour, and not my hour. You just want to include them other, them. on your hour. I can't sue you on my hour. <laughs> you just want them other, other other faiths be included in their own country's national celebrations. No, they can't be included. Yeah, of course they can. You, go ahead and finish reading because they ain't getting included ever. This could be only Christian people going to be able to participate in our independence. I mean, Christians and foreigners, and it, it is what but it is. And foreigners, too, and foreigners. Um, and that's how it be. So you you um, caused my good Christian phone forget what we was looking at. Mr. We was looking at Mr. Burroughs. No, no, I'm pulling it up right Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Burroughs' um, article, and hopefully you get to find it before yeah, we yeah, run yeah, out yeah, of no, time. No, 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 time. No, we right here. The phone timed out. Whoo, okay, stick a pin. There we go, we're back at it. Cooperation with them has been the best the creative team has experienced. She's re he's referencing the Bahamas Christian Council compared wh with when we have worked with them on some previous independence productions. So they're saying working with them this year was excellent. BCC President Delton Fernanda, Bishop Denzel Roll, and Pastor Mario Moxie were most cooperative, flexible, and helpful to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not, not, the, not the other faiths. Mm -hmm. Not the, 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 the other faiths. Nobody said, hey, we have a whole hour and a half. The Christian thing to do we get that would be to make space don't for know, other we, we get that. You said about three times now. Okay. Our t not like that, though. Right. Our team <laughs> timed this production down to the minute. Actually, down to the second for the entire evening. 
There were factors, however, that contributed to the BCC starting late. Our team had been informed that within the Prime Minister's five-minute speech, which was very much delivered on time, Good. there would be an award throw a blow for Brave versus Christie, which was very much delivered on time, there would be an award presented to the president of Rwanda. Okay. This award actually came after the PM speech, and we were not aware that the president would then be making a speech. Which we were not aware. They weren't told. The people who were responsible for curating, coordinating, timing, and re- were not told. Finish for me. Then, that was then followed with the same from U.S. Congresswoman Maxine Waters, who we were not aware was on the program. I don't want to be even aware that she was coming, that she's going to be speaking, that she's going right. to be on it. Oh, this God. element, therefore, took up unforeseen time. What was also not calculated was the time the How dignitaries crazy. needed to make their way to and from the stage before the BCC segment could start. Once all of this was done, the BCC segment was able to begin. And she's ex- he's explaining why the BCC segment seemed to run late and into the time of other performers who I think were unable to perform. Hmm. So there was no way out. Part of the issue might have been that the producers of the evening, which is one long event, were not regularly at the table. But I, I got another reason. Uh, yeah, and I want to read this thing. I'm right. ready to read that, right? This, yeah, this yeah, text, yeah. I mean, she, they, they be in Texas like crazy, right? Yeah, yes, yes, or yes, come yes. Rowing us like crazy, right? Say we need to be more professional. Say the prime minister have a right to recommend people. Would you guys do research before commenting? Please, stop being knowledgeable about your topics. Their texter, nobody he, he questioned he his right. He us. He, he vexed today. Nobody questioned his right to make recommendations, but he would would be making recommendations to a body that has the overall authority, but you are missing the point. Nobody's me, even aware. Let me read. <laughs> let me let me read the article. Davis defends honoring Kagami in today's Guardian. Prime Minister Davis yesterday defended his decision to recommend Kagami. His decision. Ah, there you go. His decision to recommend. Kagami be awarded a national honor. Kagami's regime has been accused of suppressing political dissent through intimidation, torture, and suspected assassination of exiled dissidents, a U.S. state's NGO claims. When asked about the decision to award Kagami, Davis said, quote, if you go to Rwanda, you talk about ethics. I gave it to him because of what I felt when I went to Rwanda and what I saw and what is being done to bring Have African unity, on me. bringing people together in his own country. Under our act, there is provisions for us, for me. See, for us, for me. No, mm-hmm. Don't say for us, sir. Mm-hmm. You don't mean for us. For him. You mean for you. Yeah, he felt a way when he went there. When and decided, he went to visit. I will recognize this gentleman. Because I felt moved spiritually. Go ahead, man. Kagame, uh, for me, to recommend to the advisory committee the award of the Order of Excellence. I want to say another thing. I wish you did, the, the prime minister and other senior officials would, you, you know what to do? Resist making recommendations. Because, you know, people, when you make a recommendation and they see your stature, they assume it means that it, it's an automatic it means don't ask it's a any questions. It's a direction. It's a direction. You, you don't have, do any you research. Meeting and tell the prime minister, no, I don't think this this person is appropriate at this point in time. We can make, perhaps honor them separate. Right. You, can you question the prime minister? If he say you go honor this person, and you say, Mr. Prime Minister, this person I don't think is, is appropriate, can we question the prime minister? This, this, this that's the question, things. That's, he that's, honor whoever you want. No, it's, no, it's, it's not his? It's, not, it's the national honors. It's not his. It's, not a, it's his. It's not. This is why he's able to... She said he was moved, personally moved, and then he's able to give the name, and we had no choice. And that's why they spoke. We had a and choice. What resulted? There's, there's always a they choice. They canceled all the Bohemian children who were supposed to perform. None of them performed that day because they don't matter. No, no, not one Bohemian honoree's name was called. No, they, one? They, because the Bohemians don't matter. They don't matter. Is whatever our prime minister said because he because I love our prime minister and I need you to understand whatever he says goes. Yeah, uh, and then I would like to sp- the Prime Minister to speak more to these these ethics, right? The, the spirit of ethics that he experienced while he was there. I wonder if we because have any spirit of ethics in the Bahamas. Uh, I wonder if I we could checking. honor we could honor checking. any Bohemian of any Bohemian at, at that caliber of this Kagabe. None. There's no one here that. Of that caliber, of that ilk, with that type of ethics. In fact, we make sure that 
the, the, this uh, Rwanda president was so profound, so great, no that he get a place in our Independence Day ceremony and a time to speak. But not none of the behemoths. They really didn't call their name. Give me a second. Keep talking. Give me a second to they find really, the list. They really because, didn't call their name, man. Because, uh, uh, no, I just want to say this. Uh, foreigners always matter more than us. Kagame and Maxine Waters were not the only people to be Yeah, two more honored. ladies. Lynn Gape. Yeah, two more ladies. Uh, was one of them. And another behemoth. So there are behemoths, right? Did they get to speak? No, they did not. Because they ain't important. They Only the to, important set get not, to speak. They did not get to speak. You are correct. I just, I just want to make this point, though. The national honors do not belong to the prime minister. You don't get to decide who we honor because you are the prime minister. You get to host. You get the, 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 the privilege of being a part of this national process. But you don't get to make the decisions. Except, unless, of course, this whole time, you think it's your independence. What if I say that the whole honor segment is political? Some people say, no, it's not political. It's apolitical. That's why FNMs and PLPs and independents or whoever else are, re- are, are honored. But those are all politicians. Yeah, but see, that's, that doesn't matter because they try to include. But when you see a prime minister can say, Despite it not being political, I, as a politician and prime minister of, of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, saw and was moved in a foreign country that this person deserve it, and therefore you have no say. I want to make sure that these two people are honored and get time to speak. Surely that's political, because that's an agenda. That's a political agenda that was put for it, man. That's it appear, I mean, it, that's what it, it, it appears to be. Yeah, I'll, you know, I'll say that it is, uh, call it not a political gen- agenda, call it a symptom of the political culture. The political class believes everything belongs to them. Did you see a nomination form for the National Honors this year? Did you hear about a town hall meeting, a space where Bahamians were invited to make their contributions, Usually to share happens. their nominations? I for, for two years now, I've reached out to the committee. I've invited. I tell them, whenever it's coming up, come on the show. Let's make people aware of it. But why make people aware of it if the decision is not really theirs to make? Well, we know who decision it is to make. Well, we know whose independence it is. Yeah. It's tourism's independence. It's the prime minister's independent. But it's it, the it, political class is and, independent. And, and and I'm not vexed at it. No, I I enjoyed seeing the Bohemian colors on the waterfall, in that Niagara Falls. I enjoyed seeing the Bohemian colors on the well, that, that that tower. I mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. I believe that foreigners need to understand that we are celebrating, and uh, not necessarily us. But right? the Bahamians need. But to we, we ain't that important. We ain't that important. You believe that you're significant to know. Just because you're born here in the Bahamas, Aaron, Poli- you believe you're significant. Politicians love running the Bahamas, the construct, mm. the economy, the travel budget. And Aaron, I, I know we have about uh, one minute before we go. I see this texter wanted to push the issue that the word rape, uh, un- unwarranted, unwanted penetration is rape and not un- unlawful sexual encounter. And I, I appreciate the, the text and I wanted to read that. Um, but... When you see the Minister of National Security say we ain't using that word no more? No, using. what is surprising yeah, is the Minister the of National Security is one of the only people still using the word. When he speaks non-officially, mm-hmm. when he makes public statements to the press. It's a movement to stop using the word rape, man. That's, that's, that's a taboo word now. It ain't me. I just happen to just be bringing it out and making you aware. Now, if you don't want them to change it, you make noise. Like, we need people to protest, Right. Anyway, we, the fools start buzzing like crazy, but we got to go. You should have started texting earlier. We, we got to go. This has been Guardian Radio in the AM. We will read your text, and hopefully tomorrow we can bring up one or two of these things. Aaron, say goodbye, man. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Go eat some ganep. Cool yourself down. Blessings, everybody. <laughs>